to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. I'm Ruth and I love to knit. You're very, very welcome here this morning. It is Wednesday the 29th of May 2024. Happens to be my daddy's birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> and you're, I'm coming to you, as always, from the southwest of England in Devon, where I live with my husband, two kids and two dogs. And they're all here this morning. It's half term here. Um, my son's bedroom is beyond <laughs> this wall and he's up miracle of miracles um they seem to have turned into nocturnal creatures in holiday periods um but he's up and he's already gaming with some of his friends so i apologize if there's any um outside noise and um we'll just have to see how it goes they get louder and because they wear headphones so they get louder and louder and louder and um he's been warned but who knows i've also got the window slightly on the latch and we have our field of sheep back so they've been quite noisy this morning <laughs> i've put a wee uh, video up on instagram of them and uh, they're definitely making themselves known so we'll see if it, hopefully it won't get too loud because they're right basically below my craft room window um as a British podcaster, we have to share the weather. It is dull here today. It's not raining. It has just been raining constantly since about Saturday. Um, and uh, so hopefully the lighting's okay. Um, but it's been a wee while, longer than I expected it to be. Um, I got a rubbish cold last week. I've had a wee bit of a change of medication and every time I change the medication, it seems to um, hit me with a cold. So I was not in any shape or form ready to podcast last week. Nobody needed to hear me hucking and pucking and <laughs> sniffing and coughing and getting on, but I'm okay now. Um, and I hope we can spend a wee bit of time together this morning. Where can you find me? I am Ruth Loves to Knit Podcast on Instagram. I'm Ruth Loves to Knit on Ravelry. And we have an um, email for this podcast, which is Ruth Loves to Knit at gmail.com. I feel like I'm going at 100 miles an hour already. I apologise. If you're new here, very, very welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you're an OG or you've only come recently, um, you're just as welcome. And as I say, I hope we can have a wee bit of time together. Get your craft, get your uh, drink, uh, put your feet up, <laughs> relax. And um, yeah, we'll have a good time this morning. Well, so this morning with me, it's uh, quarter to ten. We've had um, not a busy morning, but we've had to take my husband's car to the garage for its service. I have the dinner in the slow cooker. Um, I'm trying to be a wee bit more organised. And um, so I just thought I would take this opportunity to jump on and chat to you about all the nitty crafty goodness. So that's that. A few wee bits of um, my nose is itching already. I swear my nose never itches as much as when I'm doing a podcast. Because <laughs> all the yarn fumes, isn't it? Um, a few wee uh, add mini bits. As I say, I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get back to you, but I hope and pray that you've, uh, you'll stick with me. I have my notes here, as always, um, and I still will deviate off them, won't I? Um, we're doing a Cal T&P Year 24, um, hashtag T&P Year 24 um, on Instagram. And if you knit any twin set and pearl pattern this year, it started in January, it's right through to December. Um, I will do a wee uh, lucky dip <laughs> um, prize pick and I've won, for, I've won today, so listen up. Um, so far it's been patterns, but today I actually have a physical prize um, and I've chosen somebody, just went uh, and put my finger on the, on the page. Uh, there's no scientific way about it and I've chosen a name. So, and I also have, um, last, in my last podcast, I announced, um, the gift, gift away. Have I already said the wrong word? I don't know anyway. I don't know if the bots are still out there. Um, and only one person claimed theirs and from America. So the other person hasn't claimed it. It's been three weeks. So I think I've left it open and I've given warnings and reminders throughout those three weeks and the person hasn't um, responded. So I've picked a new winner for that as well. So for the gift away winner, Where's the stuff? Um, I'll just quickly show you the bits again. So it's a, sorry about the rustling, but I have kept it in plastic. There's a wee gr little grey girl uh, project bag, a skein of uh, the yarn badger yarn, 
purse socks and a few wee bits other bits and pieces um and the new person and if nobody claims this one i'll just roll it over to something else the new person is sharon eastwood 3377 i do have it on my phone just to prove that it was done i just did it on a um random generator thing where's sharon eastwood can you see that oh no need to put the need to put the brightness down a bit there you go sharon eastwood 3377 so sharon if you could get in touch with me i would really appreciate it and i will try and get that sent um off to you as soon as i possibly can i'm gonna just put that there's a basket on the floor for me to throw things in and um so yes yeah, sharon eastwood 3377 um just her comment is um oh one hour 17 minutes better make a full pot of tea lovely to see you back in your feet Ruth. <laughs> i was after the last time that was sick so that's that and then for the cal prize lovely joe and rachel have given another pattern of your choice um but the only caveat is not one of their charity um patterns it's very clear on their patterns on ravelry if it's charity or not um because we don't want to lose out money for the for the charity and i was doing a big clear up a few weeks ago and i found a gift that um lovely jeanette of crafty clegs creation sent for one of my cals i think it was the shawl cal or i don't know it's been in my possession a wee while and i feel bad i think i put it away and then um you know you put things away carefully and you don't know where to find them so anyway it's this beautiful skein now there's no label on it but she assured me at the time that it was uh, merino nylon perfect for socks oh the colors are good today you see there's a wee bit of sparkle in it and the lovely wee bag is this tilde fabric I'm not into my fabrics, I don't know. And of course, Jeanette always does the lovely wee knots. Can you see that? On the back and it's box bottom. Perfect for socks. Gorgeous little, perfect for this kind of coming into the summer, if we could believe it was summer. And um, I will send that off. Plus you can choose whatever pattern you want. Um, you can just get in touch with um, Twin Set and Pearl and they will enable that for you but as I say not the charity patterns and the winner of that is I will put I'll put them on the screen because I'm not sure I'm going to get this pronunciation right and it's Pam Nedler but it begins with a K but is it like K in knit Pam Nedler and she's knitting the Simon shawl which I've knit three of um I say I'll put the name up here and if I butchered that Pam I'm really really sorry but if you could get in touch with me please email me um, I will not be getting in touch with you. You know all the stuff with the bots. I won't ask you for anything. I won't ask you for money. I won't ask you for anything other than your address to post off um, these goodies. And please do get in touch. So that's maybe worth your while putting popping your wee picture up on the um, hashtag TMP Year Twenty Four, and you might be a winner of. And thank you, Jeanette. I'm so sorry. It's been in my possession for so long. See the, I just think it's gorgeous, and um, it's now hopefully winging its way to an, a happy home. Okay, um, da, 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 da. yes, that's the admin. <laughs> well, last week I shocked the last time I shocked you all, um, that I had no finished objects for the first time in like 50 plus um podcasts. Well, you'll be glad to know I've got some finished objects this week. The upshot of uh, being can't say you're sick when you've got a cold just felt miserable and I wasn't fit for human consumption outside the house when you're just streaming so I knit a lot and um I had a temperature and all the rest of it so I just stuck myself at home um do dogs on my lap and I knit but one of the main things that I had on my needles and the reason I had no um FOs last time was because I'd got a new I said it was a new obsession. Well, it mustn't be a new obsession because I haven't done any any since. But it was brioche. I'd finally got the courage to do brioche. Sorry, I've got a pile of stuff here. Of course, the one I want's on the bottom. Um, and um, scary, scary brioche wasn't just as scary. But I did warn you that there was mistakes. But because of the yarn I used, they were kind of um nicely covered up, so to speak. Or if you, unless you were like literally you know, here, and that's too close. Um, But the shawl I did was the Cinnabar shawl by Andrea Mari, beautiful Andrea. 
and it's brioche, half brioche and half garter stitch. And it's been in my, I think it's 2019, I, it was published. Uh, oh no, 2020, and it's been in my library since then. So, four, well, four years. <laughs> so that's a Cinnabar shawl. I'll show you. Oops, sorry, banging everything. It's a big one. It's a massive one. I haven't said what I'm wearing. I'll do that in a minute. And squish factor, get the right way, squish factor off the scale. Um, still got, <laughs> it's blocked. Um, we did get a really, really nice day a couple of weeks ago and we have a big trampoline out in the garden that the kids don't use anymore. And it's going to dump because the sides are all broken on it and everything. But it's fantastic for blocking things in the sun. <laughs> so I put this out there on blocking mats on top of the trampoline. And because uh, with two wee dogs, it's hard to put things on the floor. Um, and there's without them having their way with it. So this is the finished and I, I won't be wearing it anytime soon. Oh, I think that those colours are showing up well today. You can see it is massive. Oh, they're blown out a wee bit. That, so that's the brioche. Sorry, that's the brioche. And then this is the garter. It is, it's blown out. But look, that's maybe better there to see. Oh, I mean, it's just gorgeous. Um, not sure completely how to style it because um the brioche, it's it's off it's off center, you know, it doesn't it's not a complete V. Um oh, I can't wear it where it is. <laughs> so you can see that that goes off like that. So I suppose you would wear it like that. I don't know what way you'd wear it. Or you can wear it around your shoulders. I think a shawl cuff would be how much it's blown out. I mean, it's a big one. It's a big one. Oh, it smells. I, I washed it in um, soak. It smells divine. I mean, there's mistakes, but sure. I'd definitely, definitely be doing more brioche. Um. As I say, it's absolutely massive. It's squishy, 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 and I love it. So the yarns I use, I use a lot less actually than um, the uh, pattern said. Oh dear me, I've got brain fog day. Um, put it on like that. <laughs> um, oh, back to front. Not the first time I've done that. Worn a shawl the whole way through a video and it's been back to front. Sorry, my son's shouting. See the lovely centre, well, it's not really centre, it's off centre um, slip stitch there. And the yarns I used were um, Malabrigo Dos Terrios. I've shown you these before anyway. In the colourway, oh, this. <laughs> and it's a lovely deep kind of, that's, that's it there. And then a Zyber ball. And probably in hindsight, it's falling apart because I had to, I literally needed to finish it off. I used a ball, these balls are 150 grams. So that so you use fingering weight and a sport weight. These are 150 grams. And um, um, I literally needed 10 grams of this ball. So I probably could have, in hindsight, stopped early or something like that. But anyway, I wasn't, <laughs> I just did it, I had the ball. So it's so Cyber Ball Stark 6. Is that in focus? Yes, it is. And I don't know what the colorway is. The colorway is 1537. There you go. And it's got all of those lovely. So it really went well with this. So I have these left. I don't know what I'll use them for. I might just go ahead and do one, do something just in that. I don't know, but... Um, and I said in my last podcast that I felt like this would really, really bleed and nothing came out of it. So I was rebuked. <laughs> so that's the that's my first brioche project. I want to thank my friend Caroline again for talking me off the <laughs> off the brioche ledge. And um I look forward to I mean, I don't know if there'll ever be a cold enough day to to wear something as big as this, but it can be a lap blanket if nothing else. And um I really love it. It's coming out brighter than it actually is. It's not as in your face as that. 
So that's my first finished object. I'll quickly say what I'm wearing. Um, this is the Millie sweater by, I. this is one of my first sweaters I ever knit. Um, I can't remember who it's by, but I'm feeling you can't get it on, um, not quite, I never understand that on Ravelry, how digital patterns can't be available anymore. But anyway, um, but it was one of the first things I ever knit. And um, now looking back, you know, uh, I've used singles, which I would never use for a garment, although it's worn well, it's fine. Um, it's La Bienna Me, I got off eBay. <laughs> on and um thought I was knitting myself this luxury sweater and um it is nice but it, I just wouldn't use singles normally for sweaters and there's no short rows so it's kind of a bit um comfortable to wear but in hindsight I would do short rows in it now and then sorry just in your face and it's just a kind of but it, it's a bit dishclothy <laughs> you know it's got a bit kind of drapey or drippy drapey or drippy um and but it's gorgeous yarn obviously la bien i mean i had no idea i think i must have got it really really cheap otherwise i probably wouldn't have bought it but it just was perfect to pop on today um as it's not cold cold but um it's just very very light as i say in singles it always is but you can see like there's no very loose gauge so but um, I met my daughter several of these millies she really enjoyed them and uh, but I think you'll say I would put some short rows in the back now now that I just know a wee bit more about knitting and things so that's that that's what I'm wearing so second um, finished object I hadn't even cast on last time I saw you but um, I talked about it and they are the star mist socks Oh, it's blown out. <laughs> they're a wee bit damp. They're not just blocked um, fully. So the Star Mist Socks by Twin Set and Pearl. Surprise, surprise. Blocking. Look at them. I love a pattern like that because then you get your you get a wee bit of excitement and then it, you can just knit, 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 knit. It is. That's about it there. But the detail, I just love it. It's just gorgeous. I'll definitely knit those again. And... Um, they are um, made in, I am struggling today, to say when you've got no nocturnal teenagers who think they're being quiet and sounds like they're renovating the house. Not much sleep was had. But anyway, sorry, Russell, Russell, I've put all my wee bits and bobs in here. Um, I used this new, well, it's not new now, but when I bought it, it was half price um, from Wool Warehouse and it's the Yarnsmiths Merino Sock Superwash. Um, and I absolutely love it, uh, thankfully, because I bought quite a few skeins. <laughs> um, I would knit in it in a heartbeat. It is, I don't, I don't know, it's it's 75% merino wool, 25% nylon, but it is soft as soft as soft as, you've heard me talk about woolly goodness yarn, which obviously is a hand dyed, which I always say she, she does something to make it softer or something. It's just amazing. Well, this is I highly, highly now I don't know what I don't know what the wear will be, but knitting with it, the look of it, the de stitch definition, everything is brilliant. So if you want, and I think it's gone up to eight pounds now for um 100 gram ball, but like they're always doing discounts and stuff, so keep your eye your eye open eyes open um i would highly recommend it this is shade 2k172 i think it was kind of buttermilk or something and i bought some of the yellows to do for the um marie curie sock quest as i said in the last time any sort of any sort of socks that um lend themselves to yellow um i will use up my yellow yarn <laughs> and get those sent off so i'm well on track i've two i've one pair already done um and now these ones, and it's not till December when they give all the socks out to all the patients in the um, hospices. Um, and I've also given some yarn to some of the ladies in my knit group. So we'll hopefully get a lot, a lot of pairs sent off. But you can see like the definition's lovely on it. Really nice plump yarn. There was one wee bit where there was a knot, but sure that's not the end of the world. Um, and I would have, I would definitely, definitely recommend. I really struggle with commercial sock yarn, um, like Yorkshire spinners or um, any of that. It burns my feet. I know it's stupid. Um, I can't. I don't enjoy knitting with it, and I don't enjoy uh, wearing it. 
um although i do i do knit in it if it's gift knits and stuff but at this now as i say i might knit myself a pair i got some plain colors and i got some variegated colors um and you know you have to make up to the this is ages well whenever it came out like a couple of months ago um i have to make it up for the free postage don't you <laughs> <laughs> and when a ball's four pounds and postage is three ninety nine, you want you want to get your money's worth. Um, but I will maybe knit myself a pair and see how they how they wear. But um, yeah, really really good. Those are still just still a wee bit damp. But yes, definitely definitely got the yellow there, didn't I? So I need to put them somewhere because they are a wee bit damp. And then the second pair that oh, got them hung on my desk drawer and I can't get them all. The second pair are definitely yellow. <laughs> <laughs> these were just my handbag socks um i've had a bit of car knitting recently i haven't been at knit group um for two weeks i think hopefully get this week my daughter's going to come with me um it's amazing how the weeks just go in and busy you get busy and things come up and it's just um anyway this was just um this was gifted to me these this uh, skein there was no um label or belly band or anything on it um but these are a bit dumped too I put these in the hot press and of course there's no heating on or anything on at the minute so it's taken longer to uh, get things dry and with the damp weather we've actually I think on Sunday we had to put the heating on because the whole house felt damp um so but it's nice wee bit of variegation in them and they've turned out really nice um just did them a wee bit shorter than than those ones on a smaller size so try and do various sizes so i think i did these ones in my size which is size eight and then these ones i did in about a size six so um, that's two pairs done and i'll hide those away and then not remember where i've put them and <laughs> get those away at in december late november early december um then the last thing I hadn't cast on when i last saw you either but you know my love, um, if you've been here for any period of time at all, for uh, Brenda, B Brenda B Knits. Um, she designed the Bally Claire shot. She's originally from Northern Ireland, but she moved to Canada when she was very, very small. But her parents obviously are from Northern Ireland. I'm originally from Northern Ireland. Um, you can hear I don't have an English accent. I know some people would say I don't have a Northern Irish accent anymore either. Um, I need to say things like down and Kyle and... <laughs> things like that um but anyway um she just knocks it out of the park over and over and over again um and um she's now done just recently um an antrim shawl now i she did ballyclare which is my hometown and antrim is the town next to ballyclare but at ballyclare and antrim are in county antrim it gets very confusing but all of her patterns i think nearly all um are from uh, have northern irish place names but apparently she struggles a wee bit because people can't pronounce some of the places so i decided to just quickly cast on um she's done a shawl and a shawlette in the same design and this is the shawlette which is still a really reasonable size just uses 250 gram balls so i just use leftovers did i use leftovers can't remember and um this is what i came up with And hear the the shape yes this is what i did it's absolutely beautiful the lace simple simple but effective lace lovely bit of slip stitches and then um this design up here i mean it's not it's not tiny you know because some of the little like sophie scarves you know with a net with a little bit more um muscle around my neck they're i need they're they're a bit too small for me whereas this is just gorgeous and now i haven't quite worked i wore it to church on sunday um because it was chilly our sunday school rooms a bit nippy and um wasn't quite sure on the styling yet so i just wore it like that with underneath a raincoat because it was absolutely coming down but um i think i might um put a wee do it to the side but anyway i just love it and i definitely the big one will be on my needles although i have a few I have a few of brenda's um that need need knit up gorgeous 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 so perfect for leftovers perfect for this time of the year in in Devon at least I know there's some people dying in the heat perfect if you're in the other part of the world where you're just going into winter and you just need something um around your neck 
um I, I think it's great and um she has been so kind and i already put it on instagram and on different places but to give me a code for 50 percent off if you use the code ruth you just my life's just complete when i have a code imagine if you could use the code r-u-t-h ruth um for the antrim shawl you get both the shawlette and the um shawl and um it's good till the 8th of june so go 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 and support brenda and while you're there have we look at her other um i knit there's um she she designed a shawl during lockdown i think it was called better together i think and i've knit three of those as well <laughs> they're big shawls obviously um and uh i gifted some of those as well so um really really beautiful um and she always writes something about the place which always makes me laugh because um um oh there we go antrim shawlette is a sis little sister to the antrim shawl so you could knit the big sister and the little sister but she always writes oh there she always writes something about the place and the last Bally claire she said it was a something like a picturesque market town you know when you're from somewhere you think oh, really but um at the bottom of this she's put far across yonder blue lies a truly fairy land with the seas rippling over the shingle and sand the gay honeysuckle is luring the bee and the green glens of antrim are calling to me i'll not sing county antrim is one of the most picturesque lush green counties in northern ireland it's the home to belfast the capital of northern ireland and the birthplace of rms titanic it's only only we could celebrate a ship that sank. The Giant's Causeway comprising some 40,000 interlocking basalt columns form stepping stones that lead from the cliff foot and disappear under the sea. World famous Bushmills Whiskey granted its license in 1609. It's a history lesson. Is the world's oldest whiskey distillery. Well, I don't drink, so I've been past it many times, but I've never been in it. With fantastical landscapes, Northern Ireland was a key filming location for the Game of Thrones. There you are. I nearly want to go myself. <laughs> so if you've itching to cast on just a wee something, maybe the Antrim Shawlette would be um, great for you. Um, just two contrasting colours and you're away. But obviously there's the big, there's an Antrim shawl which uses 200 gram skeins and uh, away you go. <laughs> so, didn't really show you the middle bit there. So there you go. Wasn't sure if this would be okay, but actually once you put it on, it's the gold is more up. Um, so what did I use? My goodness, I'm getting carried away. So that's all I have left of a 50 gram ball of the gold, like what, three grams or something. And I used... Sorry, the rustling again. Russell is in the room. So the gold is uh, needle and thread. Are they still dying? I'm not sure. I had a 50 gram ball. I said I used leftover, didn't use two, two skeins. And it's called Are You Yoking? And it's um, it was 212 metres. Um, blue face leather and um, nylon. And then for the stone colour, I used Fecalana Arveta Classic um and this is t -t -t color 977 it's kind of a buff kind of um color creamy buff and uh 80 percent superwash merino nylon or merino wool 20 percent nylon and that's what i've got left not much i think maybe um seven or eight grams um I really enjoy working with Ficolana Arveta. I've done socks in it. It's super soft. But this was really, really splitty. This just this particular ball. So I had to keep watching my needle. I didn't go through the um two strand the strands of the yarn. So those are my finished objects for this week. One, the Cinnabar shawl I finished maybe the day after I last podcast. So I haven't been knitting as much. Um you might say, well, you've knit plenty. I really haven't been knitting as much. I was watching um, Mouse's Makes uh, yesterday, I think. I'm so far behind on podcasts. And she said she had a scatter gun, lovely uh, mandate. She had a scatter gun approach to her knitting. She just did a, did a wee bit of everything. I think that's maybe what I've, I've been like. I've been trying to um, move a bit more. I've been trying to get a bit healthier. Um, and I've really said to myself, no knitting till the evening. Although last week I, I, I knit 
all day a couple of days because I was feeling a bit rubbish trying to get healthier and feeling a bit rubbish um and he said to somebody I think my body went into shock because it's so long since I've done any exercise or anything so um we're 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 trying the royal way we're trying so a little bit less knitting um but uh I'm still a fast knitter so I can get a lot done in a short period of time but um anyway so that's my FOs if you get any inspiration from those go over and um look at the Antrim shawl I think she might have a Belfast shawl in the in the works or any of her other beautiful shawls and use code Ruth and you'll get a nice wee bonus discount till the 8th of June so I've given you still plenty of time um and um Brandy you knocked it out of the park again really really lovely okay whips at 30 minutes um, I have my handbag socks and my um, lovely soft accents bag that um, Jackie gifted to me and I said this is going to be my bag for my Marie Curie socks and um, I have my little, I think this is for, to put in your trolley at the supermarket isn't it, my wee Marie Curie um, thing, key ring on it just to remind me and I've just took those out of my handbag this morning and I'll put them, my handbag's actually behind you and I'll put them back in and I'm hoping this is yellow enough but um, I think it is. Um, they want yellow socks obviously because daffodil is their um, emblem um, and the yarn I'm using, oh I don't know, 20, 2020? In lockdown a group of us used to meet every Thursday night um, and chat about all things knitting and all things life and um we met every single Thursday night it was wonderful and but you know life's taken over now we're back to normal um so we don't meet anymore but uh, we did a Christmas swap and I was the luckiest duckiest person I got lovely um oh craft house magic you're all shouting at the screen Ellie oh dear me um and she sent me now we didn't give to each other you know so I sent to somebody else Ellie sent to me and she sent me a box I think of nearly every color way she did at the time she sent me uh, oh I, I mean this humongous box I have it, it was Christmas and birthday all rolled into one um and you know project bags all sorts and this was part of that and uh, so it's craft house magic and the colour weight is Rio and it's 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon. And it's been a moustache since then, so since the first Christmas lockdown. And this is the colour weight. Oh, yuck, yes. It's lemony, kind of creamy yellow. It's beautiful. And so I've just started another pair of vanilla socks. Twisted, twisted rib. I do like a twisted rib on socks. I think it's very neat looking. And then I'm just, I've just turned the heel. It's all blown out now. And hopefully they're yellow enough for um, the sock quest. And not, not if somebody's not into yellow, not in your face yellow. So that's my handbag socks. I, I um, just knit on those when I'm in five minutes sitting in the car or at knit group. Or they're easily transportable. They fit my handbag, no problem. And um, this wee bag just makes me happy. <laughs> so just work away on those then um you know that I was um I had somehow talked my way into knitting a jumper for a friend of ours who works on our mission um he lives up in Glasgow and I had thought we saw them at Easter and I had thought um that I would just do this as and when and there was no rush but my husband is going to a big conference with our mission in Edinburgh at the end of June into early July. And I thought, you know what, could I get this done? I think I could. Um, and the sweater is um, the So Basic sweater. I don't know if I've got a picture on this pattern or if I need to put a picture up. You've all seen it in the... Yeah, it's not good. I'll put a picture up here. I have a picture of a lovely, handsome young man. <laughs> it's um, a So Basic sweater. <laughs> Um, I'm using Woolly Knit, you can see I must have knit quite a bit of it, Woolly Knit Cone and it's the colourway um, Cadiz, or is it Cadiz, can you see that? Blue Cadiz and it's the 100% Merino, um, I was going to use British wool but I thought I'm not sure how people are and Merino's a bit softer and I've got a good wee bit done on this. I had 
a lot a couple of Tuesday nights since I've seen you sit in the car for a couple of hours waiting for my son and I have well underway the only thing is I set this down we I never in the winter we rarely sit in our living room because it's cold and it's not nice but the summer now well, for what it is we had a few days of glorious sunshine got the French doors open got the whole place aired out cleaned up all the rest of it and we, I sat down there and of course the dogs are straight onto my lap now they're only little dogs but I got jumped up for something set this down came back and my dog Clemmy my husband's dog we said Clemmy who is a chorky so she's only was lying comfortably on top of it so I've had to I haven't washed it yet but I had to de -hair it I never normally let the dogs anywhere near my um, nets but she got there before I could get back and she didn't do any damage to it but she was just settling in for a lovely wee cozy sit but anyway I've got the body done it's quite a long body because it's a man's it's a 2x on a 3.5 millimeter needle so this was this was perfect this not that's it there yeah that's it there um it was perfect for car knitting I put the cone on the steering wheel and that's all bound off. Now I've done a loose bind off which desperately needs blocked. I didn't do it um, in pattern, I just blocked it off but they'll not know. And I have one sleeve done. Look at me go, you can see the detail. So it's a seven stitches and a pearl, seven, seven knits and a pearl. And I've got that um, done off too. Um, and I've done the cuff and I hopefully I've done it long, I've done it to his specifications but hopefully long enough to be able to turn it up and I have the other sleeve to do so I have only one sleeve to do and I think oh the smell of wool is gorgeous um I think that's so it, I've done it to the specifications of his measurements and so when I block it I want to be really careful not to let it stretch out but I reckon once I get going, I think I always find second sleeves much quicker than first sleeves. So once I get going, hopefully that'll be a finished object next time you see it. And I'll get that blocked and away to him. And um, hopefully he won't put it in the wash and ruin it. <laughs> I've already spoken to his wife about it. And that is in my soft accents bag. Um, and happy, happy for eye bag. So I'm willing summer to come with all my bright bags. So that's the So Basic sweater by um, Maxim Sear. So that's well underway. One sleeve and hopefully I won't put it away and forget about it. Um, the next, my next whip is my Morris shawl. Part of my TMP year 24. This is in my knitter bag with my bespeckled <laughs> um be spectacled is that the way you would say it sheep um excuse me oh my nose is itchy and this is as i said morris shawl do i have a picture oh. yep by twin set and pearl and this is well under it i meant to say before this pattern is you can do sport fingering or lace lots of options for this pattern but i'm using fingering and i'm using john arbin incidentally where me and my friend caroline are going to the john arbin um mill weekend on did it, was it the eighth yeah eighth it's so not this saturday but next saturday um if you're there say hi <laughs> And I'm hoping, despite wanting a bit of summer, I'm hoping it's not as hot as it was last year. Oh my goodness. It was like a furnace. Anyway, this is the old base of Knit by Numbers. I think I actually got it there. And again, it's a wee bit brighter coming up on screen, a wee bit brighter than it is. It's number 77. Don't know if this still applies to the colours they have now, but it's 100% pure Falk. Falk. I always struggle with this. Falklands Merino Wool, um, made in the UK. And it's um, 400 metres per, per 100 grams. And um, this is has been a great wee shawl because it's a, it's a, a 12 row repeat. So I've just done like 12 rows and set it down, 12 rows and set it down. And um, it's coming on. i am just started the decreases. You can see the lovely pattern. Quite big. I mean, it's quite big already. <laughs> Joe has definitely, Joe designed this, has definitely kind of, I think, got her, um, it's not her niche, her 
signature shape um, of these shawls and then she puts you know I think it's beautiful so you've got the uh, wee stitch marker is because I did a mistake and I'm not fixing it um, so you've got this that where you increase and then I'm now decreasing and then this is constant this is the constant pattern so when you wear it this will be what you see obviously it all needs blocked out when you have it around this is what you'll see I love that idea that doesn't you know that the the pattern doesn't get lost on the wearing so that's the Morris shawl there's Morris socks as well um if you want to try the pattern before you dive into something that's but as I say it's 12 12 row repeat and after completely overthinking it when I first started it is a joy to knit now no bother at all um and hopefully that'll be finished next time I see you too although I that it's probably light enough, sorry if you can hear my son talking, um, that's probably light enough to wear even now, so, um, and it's in my, I just love how the linen is softening the more I use it. So that's that. Then the next thing on my needles, as I say, scatter gun, I've done a bit of everything, is in my tea cake and make bag, good big sweater size bag, but it's actually got a shawl in it. You see, I went to speak at a meeting in Exeter, lovely church, um, lovely ladies. Oh gosh, beginning of May, thirteenth of May or twelfth of May or something like that. And I thought I was going to talk about my podcast. I was going to talk about the Lord, to my two favourite things. <laughs> um, and um, I'd been to the church twice before, I think. So I knew the ladies a little bit and I, I was trying I was clearing up my room and I thought I have so many shawls I have so many cowls I have so many that I'm just not wearing so I took I can't remember was it 18 or 20 shawls to this meeting and every one of them was taken and the ladies just loved them some of them were big enough to be lap blankets some of them were cowls some of, and I got rid of I think it was about 18 or 20 of them and they were so pleased with it. It was lovely. And they couldn't believe I was giving them away, but I was, oh, it was worth it to see the smile on their face. And I showed them how to wear, some of them how to wear them. And oh, it was just fun. And um, so of course, clearing all those out means I can knit more shawls. <laughs> My shawl ladder in our bedroom is is not looking bare. <laughs> I've still plenty of shawls, but it justifies all these cast on and now you know I was doing I wanted to do the artist shawl I showed you the um by Minstruck Knits I showed you the I'd started it last week but then I changed my mind <laughs> so this is the pattern there's me saying I wasn't going to print out um pictures anymore but these are all was printed before I said that <laughs> And I've slightly changed my yarn choices. Oh, I've lost my needle stoppers. Don't know where they've gone. Oh, there's it there. Put that back on. Um, I've written all over the place in this bag. Um, I just I haven't changed my cut my color scheme, but I changed the colors that I was using together. So before, um, I shown you these, and it was um, it was I said, oh, I want it to be subtle, but you couldn't really see the difference. So I've changed it slightly. Now again, that red is showing up red, bright red. It's not, it's pink red. So I have done this much. See the nice waffle texture. And I've done the bits um, here before I start into sort of the triangle um, design. Um, so I wish you could get this proper color. It's just not red, it's pink. You see, maybe no, I don't know. And I'll bring all the pictures of this because I've shown you in the last two podcasts. So if you want to see that, go back. Um, hopefully I get a wee bit more done on that. It's gonna be a big shawl because it's five skeins. Yeah, five skeins, two of the main and then a skein each of the other ones. Although you don't use the whole skein for some of them, so I think it'll be pretty. And then of course the pop of color is the gold that everybody recommended that I used. So if you want to, I'll put the what the yarns are in the show notes, but if you want to um, see it in more detail, I did talk about it in my last two podcasts, I think. Last two, anyway. And again, it's in my lovely tea cake and make um, bag, all the pockets in the front. Um, nice cam, it's like a canvas, it's lovely. And um, she's on Etsy as well. 
and she has some um, patterns as well on Etsy. So that's The Artist Shawl by Moonstruck Knits. I'm getting through this rightly. Um, and then the last one, because I gave away all those shawls, and apart from socks, it had nothing on my needles. I suppose I could have done the sleeves, but I just wanted to cast on something else, didn't I? Um, I cast on um, a new shawl called The Tigress Shawl by Gotham Knits. I have knit her um, Flying Fox Shawl a few times as gifts for gifts and I gave one of those away so I think maybe I'll have to um cast on another one of those um and I it's just this is not that long I, I got it when the discount was on and as I say it's by Gotham Knits um and um if you don't know Gotham Knits she does quite funny reels on Instagram um you know about you know yarn addiction and all that sort of stuff but anyway and this is in my nice lovely wee bag that my um Dad got me when they were on holidays in Tormelinus. He says he saw it and thought of me. Thank you very much. It's a lovely canvas tote. Um, very me. <laughs> and he always complains about how many bags I've got, but yet he loves me enough to buy me a new one. Again, it's his birthday today. So 84 today. And I know many of you have met him on the podcast. So um, the, have I got a, I might have to, got a picture. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, that's it. There we go. The Tigris, Tigris. Oh, it's a Tigris because it's, it's named after the river. And it's got, it's quite a plain shawl until you come to here and one, it's like alternating stripes. So I just wanted something that you could just, you didn't always have to look at the pattern. And um, I had beautiful yarn sitting in my stash that I wanted to use. Um, in hindsight, I probably could use this for brioche, but anyway. <laughs> so, so far, um, I have knit. Now, this is quite a wintry colour scheme. This is what I've knit so far. Oh, it's butter soft. So that is probably, that's right, but this is, of course, not coming up right. This is a rust. That's coming up as an orange. It's not. It's a beautiful rust. Can I get it? See if it's, if it's, maybe, no, it's coming up as orange, six shades darker than that, <laughs> probably that, probably that, and this is pricey, pricey yarn, but I got two in a dish tea stash and two on a reduced to clear, um, so I'm enjoying the wee treat, <laughs> I got it on a very cheap D stash and then um the register I think it's about 26 pounds a skein and tangled yarn was selling for nine so and um the reason it was I think so cheap was because they didn't have the same dye lot but I thought for a for a shawl it doesn't matter so this one here the green is called ivy and these are the ones that don't have the same dye lot so it's opus yarn from Walcott yarns and it's 70% Falkland Merino, 30% Baby Alpaca and 100% Awesome and I would entirely agree. If you have the budget, um, the inside of this bag I think is coming onto my yarn. Um, if you have the budget, that's it there. I wish I'd get this one right. I would recommend this and this one is um, Cinnabar. So this is a theme. So you can imagine Cinnabar, this is not bright orange. Okay. And that's the two I'm using, and it's going to be the lushest, loveliest. I mean, this the stitch definition is just gorgeous. Now I went up a needle size, um, from what it said. I didn't go gauge swatch, but I went up a needle size from what it said in the pattern because I didn't like the fabric of it. But I've got plenty of yarn, um, so I wish I could see that. It's not orange, at all. But anyway, I maybe get a picture outside, um, if the weather permits, so you can see what, um. It actually does look like and I'm gonna just knit away on that shawl tag still on the bag so oh better put the pattern back in and I'll be looking for it so that those are my whips and I think I'll get the sweater finished and the Morris shawl finished and be well underway hopefully with the artists and the tigress but I was thinking oh well, first of all, let's choose my next twin set and pearl pattern because I always have to have one on the needles the whole year. It's the rules. It's the law. And as you know, I'm keeping them in my wee sheep. Um, 
jar thing. I'm sure this is meant to be a plant pot or something, but I just been using it. And you can see all my project. Now there's a new pair of socks out. I've forgotten what the name of them are. And I haven't got those in here. And next week the Ruth shawl is coming out, but I'm going to do a separate video about that. I am more than excited and cannot believe in my lifetime that something is going to be knit with my name on it and going to such a good cause but we'll talk about that later okay let's go i think i'll pick out two so we have oh i've already knit that one <laughs> Need to take that one out. Okay, we have the Disco Bunny shawl. Oh, another shawl. So that won't be cast on just yet. Let's get a pair of socks. Come on, Ruth. The Open Hands, Open Heart socks. So let me just quickly see if we can get a picture of that because I don't know anything about it. I have them all in a in a um say open hands open heart socks. There we go. Oh they're lovely. Oh yes, they'll do they'll do very well. Do you know what? I'm gonna put that shawl back in because I have a few shawls on the go and see if I can get another pair of socks or something different. Let's see, is that cheating? I don't care. Because I want to cast on the Ruth shawl as soon as it comes out. Oh, it's another shawl! <laughs> this is not working. <laughs> That's all shawls. I'll stick to one. I'll stick to one. Let me let me do one have one last try. I'll stick to one pair of socks, will I? Yes! <laughs> We've got the Anthony socks. There's really not a scientific Anthony, which is good for Bridget and being out, isn't it? Oh, can't spell socks. Anthony socks. Nope, they're not twin set and pearl, those ones. There we go. Oh, I like those ones too. Oh, yes. Perfect. So, <laughs> slightly cheating. <laughs> is the Anthony socks and the open hands, open heart socks, which are both beautiful. So just to prove my awful writing that they're definitely there and that I completely cheated and would have been knitting two shawls if I'd gone with, with what that said. <laughs> okay, have I said everything? Yes, the other thing was, um, I have, I knit a lot of these wee tops um, I have knit a lot of short sleeve tops, but you know, I actually wear cardigans a lot more. And the only cardigan I have got is is so old and bally and it's and it's felting. It's been it's been worn so much as bright yellow. Um it's the JC cardigan, JC by um Isabel Kramer. And um I have yarned knit another one of those and I was looking through my, I probably don't have it here, do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, no, I don't have it here. I have another one that I want to do from one of my books. Um, so one of those might be cast on the next time you see it. I probably will do another one in yellow, but I have quite a few cones, um, fingering weight cardigans are what I wear. I have um, a large, too much information, but anyway, I have a large hernia, which I've had operation, been operated on twice, and both operations haven't worked. Um, and so sweaters sometimes sit <laughs> differently, um, and uh, worse cardigans just work well, and you know, as it's coming into the summer and stuff as well. But, so those, those are in the back burner in my mind as well, of doing, um, casting on a couple of cardigans. Um, but I want to get that sweater finished first. That's the priority. Get it blocked, get it away, get it wrapped up, get it away. And then I can get some fresh garments on my needles. No rush for any of them. Um, so that's kind of, what is fermenting? No, it's not fermenting, fermenting. Fermenting in the back of my brain um, and maybe something like that might be cast on. But as I say, it's my knitting I'll cast on if I want to. It's my life and can do whatever you want and you hear those sheep are really loud now anyway i think that is the end of all the knitting stuff 
I managed to do nearly an hour. Um, I'm so glad that you spent some time with me. Um, not as many people watched my last video. I don't know where everybody went, uh, but I'm always glad if any of you watch my last my videos that I'm just so thrilled that you want to spend time with me in this minefield of other videos that are, are up there that you could spend time with. Um, I am always blessed and chuffed to bits that you want to spend some time with me. But you know if you've watched before that I'm a Christian and I always end my videos with a little something or other um, that the Lord's put in my heart. I thank you so much for the lovely comments on my husband last, um, last time. He really couldn't believe that people would even comment, never mind about say nice things. Um, and I nearly tried to persuade him to do it again, but he wasn't having it. <laughs> Maybe give him a few months off and try again. Um, so you're stuck with me this week. But um, I hope that if you want to stay and listen to that, you will. But I know it's not what everybody comes here for. And I, that's fine. Um, I am just so thrilled, as I say, that you've been with me. Do leave a comment if you want to. Do please like and subscribe. That would be really, really amazing. Um, as I say, with the Ruth Shawl coming out next week, I'm going to do a little um, small one uh, just to talk about that. Um, give you all the information and all the details. Um, but if you're leaving me now, I'm going to say thank you so much. Look after yourselves, knit till your heart's content. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye. Okay, if you're staying, thank you so much. Um, one of the, my son's getting louder. One of the um, reasons I maybe haven't podcast is not just because I wasn't feeling well, but I don't know how to I don't know how to begin this. <laughs> I was like, do you ever feel you just can't order your thoughts and some and feelings sometimes? That's how I felt maybe for the last week or ten days. Um well I was sick last week. Kids are off school this week, so that's routine out the window. We're expecting a student from our Bible college on Saturday. He's come to stay with us for two weeks, so we're getting that all sorted. Eva has her GCSEs. She seems to be coping fine, but I'm bundling nerves. <laughs> and a few other things besides that are just, you know, going on in the background. And don't need to tell you the world is in a mess. So many feelings about all that I see on my TV screen. And I will say I wasn't going to podcast as I just didn't feel that I had anything to say or share from God's word. Um... Yeah, I just couldn't get my thoughts straight to be able to put anything down on paper to then share with you. And I even, as I say, tried to persuade my husband <laughs> to speak to you all again. You know, sitting here in my peaceful house, sheep bleating in the background with food in the cupboards and a safe roof over my head, privilege beyond belief. I have turned my television off because... I couldn't cope with what I was seeing anymore. Trying to ignore the outside world. Again, a massive privilege that I can just press off on my TV. Honestly, I have to do this sometimes just for my own mental health because my heart is just breaking and my head just can't cope. Maybe you seem, feel the same way at the moment. Helpless, confused, frustrated, angry even. Feelings of guilt, maybe, and so much more. Maybe you have other closer to home issues that are breaking, that are bringing you to breaking point. Despite having been a Christian for many, many years, I often let the overwhelm cloud my thoughts and distract me from my own personal time with God and his word. And if this happens, I often turn to the Psalms. And you'll not be surprised about the Psalm that I've chosen. There's a, there's a spoiler. And it's just Psalm 46. And just listen. I know um, when my dad read Psalm 23, some people said they just closed their eyes and listened. Well, I maybe don't have as nice a voice as my dad, but I'll try. So Psalm 46 is, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God and the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall, not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. 
The Almighty God is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he, desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and scatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. You know, trusting God with our present and future is the only way. Placing everything into God's hands. Don't get me wrong, it's not a magic bullet that suddenly wipes away all fear and worry as at the end of the day we're only human and there is so much evil in this world. Maybe in the chaos of this world we just need to come away. Be still and know that I am God. I talk about this so, so often. You know, I teach Sunday school and over the past weeks we have been learning about lots of the Old Testament stories. And just this past Sunday, I was looking at the kids' faces as we learned about Joshua leading the Israelites across the River Jordan towards the Promised Land. We tried to imagine how they felt, uh, finally being brought out of captivity and slavery and then told to walk across the fast-flowing River Jordan, away from all they'd ever known, with very little idea of what was coming next. You know, I asked the kids if they thought they'd be scared and all of them, there's seven of them, all of them said, of course not, because God was with them. Like they said it in a, of course not, total trust and without hesitation. So many of us have reduced God down and doubt him sometimes. The omnipotent, omnipresent, powerful God, the God of all creation, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God who flung the stars into space and loved us enough to send his only son to die for us. He is still God. He is still in control and he still loves each and every one of us, no matter your colour, your creed, your ethnicity, your anything. Um, he loves you regardless. In Psalm 46, the same verse is repeated. The Almighty God is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And I think if something's repeated in the Bible, then it's really important. Oh, turn the page. My question today to you is, is God your fortress? Do you know him? Have you put your faith and trust to him? Can you turn to him in times of trouble? I can honestly say I don't know what I would do if I hadn't the assurance that one day when this life is over, I will go to be with Jesus in eternity or that I can I can um, go to him when I have problems. So yes, I'm not facing war, famine, earthquake, flood or any risk to my life. Having my trust in God doesn't make my life easier, but oh, what a blessing to be able to cast my cares on him. First Peter 5 says, 5, 7 says, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Esther Kerr Rustoy wrote this amazing song. Sometimes a day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away, all tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see, see, we see Christ. At times the sky seems dark and not a ray of light. We're tossed and driven on, no human help in sight. But there is one in heaven who knows our deepest care. Let Jesus solve your problems. Just go to him in prayer. Life's day will soon be o'er, all storms forever past. We'll cross the great divide the, to glory safe at last. We'll share the joys of heaven, a harp, a home, a crown. The tempter will be banished. We'll lay our burdens down. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Jesus. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Jesus. Go and ask you know who to play that for you today. It will be worth it all. And I defy you not to have your spirits lifted. But you know, for those who are really suffering, you know who I'm talking about. Lift them to God. 
let's get down on our knees again in prayer for these people. I don't say this flippantly or to pass the buck in any way, but imagine how God could or would move if we took to our knees and prayed for all of the world's situations. I am so thankful that I can sit here in my little craft room, talk to you. I have my knitting. I have my, you know, my peaceful life. I am beyond blessed. But for those who do not experience this today, I lift them to God. I ask God to be there. I ask God to move. I ask God to change things. And I pray that I hope that if you know and love the Lord, that you will be praying in the same way. If you don't know and love the Lord and you haven't a clue what I'm talking about, please do get in touch. The Bible says one way God said to get to heaven and um, he has opened that door for you to walk right in if you want to. If you just come before him, ask for forgiveness, ask him to be your saviour and ask him to um, live in your life. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I can't do it for you. I can't make you do anything. I have no power over you whatsoever. But I know in my own life, making that decision to follow him, I have no regrets. And if you need to just be still today, take that time. It's so important. I know in a busy life, I know that it's often hard. Get up that wee bit earlier. Stay up that wee bit later. Close the door. I know when my kids are small, sometimes I just had to go into the bathroom. But um, just take that time to just get into his presence, to still your mind and to know that he is God. Thank you so much. Well over the hour today. But sure, I wondered if it was a shorter podcast last week and our last time and not as many people watched. So I'm going for the longer one today. Listen, if you're um, if you've got a bit of knitting done today, that's brilliant. Um, thank you so much, as I say, for spending time with me. If you're a gift away winner please please get in touch um and until i see you again just send so much love and god bless bye